Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another Pokemon Red and Blue solo run. Today's Pokemon is Cubone, the Lonely Pokemon. Now, I was really excited to give this one a try. Uh, let's talk about it just a second before we jump in. Uh, its base stats are, at first they look like they're normal, but you have to take into account that Cubone has a very high 95 base defense, which means that its other stats suffer as a result, so it's not quite as good as you might think. It's got low speed, but that's kind of par for the course so far for us. Uh, so not too bad. Its level up move pool is absolutely abysmal. Uh, it starts off with Bone Club and Growl, and outside of that, the moves aren't really special. But it does have a lot of options to complete this run, with Earthquake easily being the best of the bunch. Uh, the number one concern I have going into this run is the fact that it has no natural way to trigger the coveted badge boost. Uh, and we'll see what trouble that causes us much later. Uh, but before we go any further, I'd like to say if you enjoy this video uh, at any time, go ahead and feel free to subscribe for more of these, like if you enjoy, and any feedback is appreciated. As we're going over the start of the game here, I'd like to say that some of my worries for Cubone going into it is that as a ground type, it'll be nice because there's lots of rock and poison types littered throughout the game with the trainers, but the weaknesses are something that we'll have to deal with early and late, Misty and Erica uh, being sort of the key concerns that will kind of come up to first. And for the first time here, I reset. I actually reset the game for decent IVs, specifically speed. I don't necessarily care to get the best Cubone, but I don't want a bad one. Uh, it's roughly 1 in 65,000 chance to get a perfect one. I don't care for that. But I do reset about a dozen times or so. I get a perfect speed stat, and I get other stats that aren't absolutely trash. I uh, just thought I'd mention that going forward. We easily win the starter battle, and just to see if I can do it, I skip the two optional bug catchers doing minimum battles, only battling the one bug catcher that you have to get before Brock. And I give Brock a shot as soon as I can make it to him. Minimum battles. Uh, I do pretty nice damage to Geodude, but I definitely need some more stats before I can take it on. I decide to go back to Viridian. I fight the other two bug catchers. I reach level 8. And up to this point, this was the easiest Brock battle that I've had in my limited experience. Bone Club won't always be the most reliable. But it got the job done. Cubone even has Growl, so when I made it to Onyx, I can use that when it goes for Bide so I don't take the big damage. And while we do get low, I take the battle without grinding any outside of the extra bug catchers. Now here's a clip to remind you to have enough PP for your Bone Club before getting into a hardened battle with this stupid bug catcher has both Kakuna and Metapod. Mount Moon is quite simple. I do pick up the TM for Water Gun, I pick up the Rare Candy, I do get Mega Punch, and I actually remember this time that you can skip this awful Raticate Team Rocket Grunt. And this time, just to spice it up, I commit Heresy, I get the Dome Fossil, and I sure hope that this doesn't curse the run later down the road. Once I make it to Cerulean, I understand that Misty will be an absolute problem, so rival number two is the obvious choice here. I try to get him down six different times. I do make it to Squirtle a couple of times, but the Pidgeotto is so oppressive at this level, and either it chips me down itself to nearly nothing, or it sand attacks me. And if I get really lucky, it does a little bit of both, giving me like the slightest little bit of hope, and then dragging it away at the end. Either way, the only trainer I th can think of that I stand a chance against is the Goldeen trainer in Misty's Gym. It only uses Peck, and it's generally just free experience. At this point, I have no other free trainers to fight. I'm stuck. I can't go back and fight any of the trainers I missed in Mount Moon. So I attempt to slam into the wall that is rival number two nine more times before I give in to the reality that I have to actually go grind. And it's not the worst because Cubone is in the medium fast group and things like Ekans go down pretty easy. I spend a bit of time getting to level 18. I go to rival two once again, and this time it takes me three additional times uh, putting my total tries to 18 before I finally beat this one. I somehow managed to pull it off at 3 HP at the end, but a win is a win, and I'm not going to reload. Nugget Bridge isn't an issue. I'm still confident I can skip extra trainers up here, but I do lure this trainer down so that I can actually pick up Seismic Toss here, because it's a move that I have on my mind for the future of this run, and you'll see it come into play a lot later. Now everybody knows what time it is. Build the science guy. I 
pick up dig, 100 power stab move for Cubone, and I decide it's time to just kind of gauge the power level of Misty, because I feel like we're going to have to skip her, but you never know, and it turns out that I did know, and we get absolutely destroyed before I beat up on this other horsey trainer in her gym before heading down to the SS Ann. Once on board, I pick up Body Slam, which can immediately replace Mega Punch, and with a decent move pool of Bone Club, Dig, Water Gun, and Body Slam, I attempt Rival number 3 before I make any other decisions. And much to my surprise, we were actually able to get past Rival number 3 on the first try, mainly due to the fact that we made it past Pidgeotto fairly healthy without loads of sand in our eyes. Uh, Dig makes a night and day difference here. Especially after looking at rival number two, we one shot both the Kadabra and the War Turtle. Now, looking back at my current level, uh, I calculate that I'll roughly need to be about level 28 or above to outspeed Misty Staryu. Uh, and with Dig's high base power, I think that's what it's really going to take to get past her. So before I get cut, I take advantage of the easy trainer battles on the SSN. And I even get this optional rare candy that I normally never get and maybe never will again. I get up to level 28, I finally get cut, I grab the bike voucher, and then I go back to see if my calculations for speed are indeed correct, and it turns out that they are not, and Staryu still goes first, and that extra damage is a little bit too much for me to overcome at this point. I opt to go ahead and use a rare candy early here, I'm pretty confident that the extra level will be enough for me to outspeed it, and it is. And I one hit the star you would dig. I do take a hit from Starmie. Luckily it doesn't use Bubble Beam. And I'm able to take it out fairly easy. The second badge down. And for a little bit this run's difficulty lets up to almost nothing. It really surprised me. And now that I can use Cut outside of battle. I go down to Viridian once again. And I fight Lieutenant Surge. And being the electric trainer. Uh, he's not really much of an issue. I don't even really need to use Dig here. I do Bone Club the Voltorb and the Pikachu just to save a turn. And I save Dig for the Raichu just in case I don't want to disrespect it too hard. And just like that, another badge down. I do make a minor mistake here. I forget to visit the Pokemon and I don't buy any repels. And it's not really a hurdle by any means, but just look how many wild battles are happening in succession right here. Now I decide to brute force my way through it anyway. The trainers inside aren't really an issue. The dreaded hiker with two Geodudes and a Graveler goes down, no issue at all. After that we make our way to Celadon. I spend my money on some Carbos for a little speed boost, buy some fresh waters, I pick up Ice Beam, save one for the guard. The rocket hideout isn't that bad and there's not really much to say here. The first Geophony fight only takes me a single try. Dig's extremely powerful on Cubone. I mean, I just start the battle at half health. And Kangaskhan does take me down to 10 health, but I'm still able to pull it off. Conventional wisdom would tell you that you need to save Erica for the end. Cubone is weak to grass and we know how much trouble it was for Slowpoke. But remember that Cubone is much faster than Slowpoke, so I decided to go over and just kind of give it a little test run. The original idea was that this first battle was just to, to gauge how far off we are. I didn't even heal at the Poke Center, and yet Cubone, not even at full health, is able to make it to the Vile Plume. I do get hit with a lethal Petal Dance, but the fact I made it this far lets you know that I can probably do this. So I go back, I heal up, go back in. And Vileplume does a lot of damage with Petal Dance, but the poison topping making Dig do pretty heavy neutral damage, and with my speed, uh, I hang on and I get a surprise victory that I really didn't expect to have at this point, and four badges are down. Anyway, I pick up Fly, I head over to Pokemon Tower for rival number four. This battle is not that difficult. As always, it's a matter of Pidgeotto and Sand Attack, and unfortunately, it does take two body slams. I do take a single sand attack, but I actually get a little luck here and I don't miss any moves on any subsequent Pokemon. I use dig on the war turtle and boom goes the dynamite. We make our way up to Pokemon Tower and I don't think that this would really be a Cubone video if I didn't have footage of me re-killing the soul of Cubone's already dead mother. So here's that. After this I head back to Celadon, I pick up the Pokedoll for future strategic value, and I opt to head over to Saffron first, which in hindsight was probably a mistake, and that is because rival number 5 was Nightmare Fuel. I initially tried this one, and I failed 6 times, and I'll show this one battle just to kind of showcase the problems that I run into. The first problem is that I don't really do enough damage, and it takes way too many moves to get the Pidgeot down. 
which means on an average attempt, I'm going to take some stand attacks. And here's me taking three of them. Uh, and then the execute, major problem here, with my accuracy already lowered, no way to knock this egg out fast, I get hit with leech seed, I get paralyzed, and the best case scenario, I made it to blast toys at the end, and at this point I'm already pretty much dead in the water, and all these status conditions are on me, I got seeds coming out of me, and it's just not happening. Rather than skip ahead to Kogo like I should have, I stubbornly fight the grunts littered around Silfco to see if some more levels will make this fight more feasible. This also gives me a chance to go ahead and pick up uh, the rare candy and Earthquake earlier than I normally would. Usually I would save it till after Giovanni, but it's Cubone's best move. Let's go ahead and get it. And I thought I'd make a quick note here that I leveled up and got Bumerang, and on paper it looks decent. 50 power, hits twice, basically equal to Earthquake, right? And I thought it would be an interesting to test it out, but the 90% accuracy probably does make it inferior. And there's not really any room for it in the end game, but we do take it right now. At level 43, I go back to Rival 5, and I try 6 more times before I finally give up. I show a couple of attempts here, and you can see that I consistently make it to the Blast Toys, but I'm not healthy enough to really survive any of its attacks. It's a little bit more reliable now, but I'm not quite there, and rather than continue to bang my head on the wall, I decide it's best to go ahead and move on because I've already done this 12 times. So I do just that. I head down to Fuchsia. The Koga battle was just what the doctor ordered. Every member of his team is severely weak to ground, and it makes the perfect opportunity to live out my fantasies of pretending that Boomerang is actually a viable move. We go ahead and pick up Surf and the Teeth, while we are in the area at the Safari Zone, and back at Sylph, I immediately replaced the worst move in the game, Boomerang, with Ice Beam. My reasoning here is that uh, it's Pidgeot and Execute are both weak to it, and it's better than the neutral damage from Body Slams. And it turns out that Ice Beam does help out a lot. I end up trying the fight a few more times, and more or less it turns out the same. It turns out that Blastoise was the correct choice. Uh, it gave me the most difficulty by far in this run. It has superior defenses, kind of negates my mostly physical moveset. And it puts Execute on the team, which only exists to annoy me. And I still can't win the fight in my current state without perfect luck. So I grind just a teeny bit more on the remaining grunts. But it turns out I still can't take on the rival, so I use two rare candies and we go back in to get that little bitty bit of edge. Even then, this fight takes me another four times to attempt. Here's a successful attempt. It took me getting lucky having the Pidgeot miss a sand attack uh, and not getting paralyzed by the Execute and Blastoise using at least one of his turns on withdrawal. Overall, the fight took me about 20 attempts. And knowing I had to fight the rival another time and then again at the Elite Four is not really a comforting feeling for this run. But it's a victory and those other things will be tomorrow's problems. The second Giovanni fight is definitely anticlimactic as you might think. Uh, the Rhyhorn survives a hit if that really counts for anything. But other than that, uh, he gets pushed to the side just like this boulder inside the Warden's house where I pick up the rare candy. I make a quick pit stop in to Saffron City to get the Mimic TM, and then I make my way down to Cinnabar. And this gym is just as easy as you'd expect. The trainers are inside are just walking experience, and with Earthquake, most of the Pokemon are one hits. Arcanine is thick as always, but Blaine has the game's worst AI, and it doesn't really matter if it takes an extra turn or two. And in this run, I wind up saving Sabrina for the last gym simply because I'm scared of her level 43 Alakazam and I want it to be as high of a level as possible here. I do get paralyzed, but the low defensive stats coupled with Earthquake being my best move makes this fight go about how you would expect. Although I do get low in the process, I do believe the extra levels allowed me to hang in there to get the win. Before fighting Giovanni, I head back and pick up a few proteins to increase my attack just a little bit. I should have probably gotten special or HP increases in hindsight, but it is what it is. The first fight, Nidal King manages to hang on with a sliver of health and get the luckiest crit with Thrash I've ever seen in my entire life. But on the second attempt, I put him into his place. Overall, there really isn't much to say about Giovanni. I believe his third iteration of him is the, the inferior win. Kangaskhan is a much better wild card, not to mention the awful move pools that he has. Uh, and did you know that none of Giovanni's many ground Pokemon even have Earthquake? And now you know, and knowledge is half the battle. Next up is rival number 6, and I'd love to say that this was the most frustrating part of the run, but I'd really be lying if I said that. It's honestly not an awful attempt right here, but it was frustrating. Alakazam crit me nearly every single 
Tom, and he one-shot me. And to the best of my knowledge, everything I typed in and calculated was that average uh, uh, crit for Alakazam should be about 23.5% chance. But he crit about 80% here, and it was very frustrating. Uh, I was nearly screaming at this point. The main issue that I had was that it outsped me, and I even tried to use a couple of air candies, and it really didn't help. What I ended up having to do was going ahead and teaching Mimic. So I teach it to Cubone, and I take Pidgeot's agility. I use it three times to not only outspeed, but we get the precious badge boost goodness that we've been missing out on. And with this strategy, the fight isn't that bad anymore. Blastoise is still an absolute unit. He takes two badge boosted earthquakes, but still cooperates overall. I skip every trainer in Victory Road and finally make it to what is essentially the playoffs of the run at record time. Outside of the hiccup with Rival 5 taking a little bit of time, this run has been my best by a very large margin and I've been really impressed with Cubone up to this point and I really didn't see what made him be low tier like some people say. And you can kind of see where this is going. Usually in terms of raw footage, this is about 85% or above, but Cubon has about 3 hours of Elite 4 footage, and why is that? Well, to state the obvious, it's that Cubone is weak to Ice, and Laura Lee is the Ice Elite 4 member. I start off with an extremely optimistic level 57, since I'm going for time, but you see how much damage the Dugong does with one move. I even make some attempts by using a couple of air candies, but it's beyond rough. Yugong itself is actually one that I can take down, but Cloyster has such high defense, and at this state, it would take about five or six earthquakes to even knock it out. And there's not a move worth mimicking until the Slowbro comes in on the third Pokemon. So at this point, I have to go back to Victory Road, and I have to grind. I grind all the way up to level 65. And I was looking for solutions, and I thought, hey, submission is the answer. Fighting move, 80 base power, ice is weak to fighting, bada bing, bada boom, problem solved, run over, right? Well, this turns out not to be the case. Uh, I give it two more shots with submission, and it does all right damage to dugong, but the problem is that submission hits with recoil. And it only has 80% accuracy, it's not that reliable, and in fact the Cloister's defense is still going to be a problem, it doesn't even do that much damage to it. After messing around some more, it was at this point that I finally found a strategy that seemed like something I could work towards. You remember all the way back at Bill's house we picked up that Seismic Toss? Well Seismic Toss is a pretty unique move in Gen 1. It does your level's worth of damage uh, to the opponent, it ignores defense and type effectiveness, Loy Lee has high defensive stats, and I'm a physical attacker for the most part, so I decided to teach it to Cubone and see where that kind of takes us for now. The first attempt is not that bad. I do learn that Earthquake is much more efficient on Dugong, and we get it down, but more importantly, at level 67, Seismic Toss can two-hit a Cloister, meaning that if we avoid one of his moves, we can actually get it down, and we do that on the first attempt. And we finally make it to the Slowbro, and it's got notoriously bad AI, one of the worst in the game. It hates to attack, and the idea is that we use Mimic on Amnesia, boost our special, giving us the badge boost, and hopefully that'll be enough to take us to the end of this fight, and that's the strategy uh, from here on out. I get off uh, the required Amnesias, but I do waste a couple of turns by not using optimal moves, but to my surprise, we take out the Slowpoke, then the Jinx comes in, we get it in one hit, Lapras gets taken down to about 40% of his health with a single Earthquake, but unfortunately a Hydra Pump takes us out. I'm not discouraged at this point, it seems that there is some light at the end of the tunnel, and we did some theory crafting, we gained 10 levels, and we're making some progress at least. At this point, I try several more times. I even use up the rest of my rare candies at this point to give myself the best shot that I can, but it's not happening. I am opting just to black out at this point and keep the experience if I can make it past the cloister, so I'm at least getting something. And it wasn't until a whopping attempt number 45 that I was able to break through the barrier. And I'll admit, I got a little lucky with the Lapras missing blizzards, but a win is a win. And now that the Ice Trainer is down, and the most obvious glaring weakness, there's no way that we would just straight up one shot the rest of the Elite Four and wrap up the video, right? Well, first up is Bruno. Usually I don't have much to say about Bruno, but there's something about getting beat up for hours by Lorely 
that makes you really appreciate how pathetic and worthless Bruno actually is. Just because Laura Lee can push me around 45 times doesn't mean Bruno's gonna get the satisfaction. Agatha is up next, and generally this is the one trainer that I'd be the most worried about. She falls kind of in the middle of the gauntlet, she has annoying status moves, Pokemon that are really fast, and in this specific case, all of her Pokemon are actually weak to Earthquake, on top of already being pretty frail on the defensive side of things. Gobat of course is immune to ground, but we do have Ice Beam, and I do get brought down to 40 HP in this fight, but once I get off my moves, they hurt enough to get me to the last Gengar where luckily it just goes for toxic rather than a damaging move or a status move and it allows me to take the win over the first try and we get to Lance and we're flying pretty high at this point. We broke through the wall, that is Laura Lee. Cubone has Mimic along with Ice Beam. I can take on Lance's dragons and I feel like I must say this, luck is a part of these runs. We don't save at the Elite Four so that luck will never be the defining trait of one of these runs. But I do get the luckiest thing I've ever gotten in my life here. And I freeze the Gyarados on turn 1. And it must also be said that there is no chance of thawing out in generation 1. Unless I use a fire move that has a chance to burn. And I'm not going to do that. And just like that we remove the biggest threat for the rest of this run instantly. I mimic agility from the Dragonair to ensure that I have enough stats to one hit the remaining Pokemon. Dragonair 1 goes down to a single Ice Beam after some agilities. Dragonair 2 goes down. Aerodactyl goes down despite being only neutral to Ice Beam. And of course Dragonite is a piece of paper when it comes to ice as it's double super effective against it. And now we are on our first attempt against a rival. And if you're kind of looking down at the video you might have guessed that this is not actually... I mean, it doesn't go as planned. We'll just say that. And I'd like to say in my three runs I learned a lot about red and blue on the mechanical level. But I do learn new things every run, and in this run I learned that Pidgeot doesn't have agility anymore, thus kind of nullifying my initial strategy, and it makes me waste my opening move, uh, but it does lead to a kind of a funny interaction here where I mimic mirror move, and then Pidgeot mirror moves mimic, and it gets progressively less funny when I realize that the Pidgeot mimics Ice Beam, um, but thank the lord I knock it out and it doesn't get any chances to actually use it. Alakazam is scary as always, but frail. I outspeed it, I take it down in one shot. Rhydon, while not a one shot, isn't much of a threat, and Arcanine isn't thick enough this time to survive an earthquake. It's when you get to this egg abomination here where the problems start. This tree only has three moves for whatever reason. Why? We may never know. It has Hypnosis, and it doesn't have Leech Seed, thank God. But it does have very slow and painful moves. Uh, it has Stomp and Barrage and I don't know, this Pokemon's whole plan is just to put you to sleep and make you slowly die. And that's just what we do. And I'm not upset, it was a pretty deep run, almost as far as you can really go without beating the game. So all in all, we just gotta get back in there and try again. And I attempt Laura Lee again and I lose instantly. And it's sad that the fight isn't consistent, even though I'm level 76 at this point, but once again, it is what it is. Another quick point that I don't talk about is that some Pokemon require elixirs and ethers to make it through their Elite Four runs. And I use up most of what I picked up in this run, and I do have to go back out and pick up some of the extra stuff before I start grinding again. It takes me five more times to get past Laura Lee the next time and once again it relies on Lapras missing a Hydro Pump although with a max amnesia boost I do think that I could have survived anything outside of a crit at the health level that I was at and I'm very sorry guys but for time constraints we're gonna have to skip me kicking Bruno's head in. I do get past Agatha on the first try again and I only want to note this because even though at this point I outspeed and have super effective hard hitting moves against her I figured that I would at least have one battle in this whole video where Agatha hits me with hypnosis and a dream eater and a confused ray and I'm just surrounded by, I just figured it would go bad at least once, but it never really happened. So from this point on, we're going to be skipping over uh, the battles that go well. I will talk about some of the bad points. Now I remember when I reached Lance last time and I said I got really lucky with that freeze on Gyarados? Well, Karma... Karma's real, and 
Just watch me get hit with a turn one critical hit hydro pump that sends my cubone to the shadow realm and starts me over. This time it takes me another three attempts to get Laura Lee down, putting me to a whopping 55 tries at this point. I use the same strategy I've been using and I breeze my way and I get to Lance again. The third attempt against Lance goes awful. I don't have a concrete answer to Gyarados and I just die humiliated on the floor fetal position. Three more tries later, I do make it back to Lance and two seismic tosses are not enough to take out Gyarados. And Lance has this crazy version of Hydro Pump that never misses and this brings our total tries up to 58. On our very next attempt, Seismic Toss still isn't enough to two hit knock it out. So I go for Ice Beam instead and I get another lucky 10% freeze chance once again. And after, after Gyarados goes down, Lance really doesn't really offer a challenge. Uh, just like the last time I mimic agility, yada yada, so on and so forth. And I finally get my second crack at the final battle. Now I learned from last time, I go straight offensive from the start. No more mimicking, none of that. Um, and I take down the first four Pokemon with no issues, but it's always this executor, this abomination that gives us problems. And I decide to try to be a little crafty here. I mimic hypnosis since the bulk of executor means that I will never be able to two shot it. And it just chips me down really low. And it gets a full restore that really puts a nail in the coffin here. At the end of the fight, I try Hail Mary Hypnosis on it because I'm only at 8 HP. I miss the move and we have to start over. Once we make it back to Lance again, it appears that you would need to be about level 90 to ensure that a Seismic Toss is a 2 hit knockout on Gyarados. Hopefully that's not going to happen this run. Uh, and you can see that we can comfortably tank a Hydro Pump. And you know how this fight goes once Gyarados goes down. Agility. 4 Ice Beams, Champion down once again, and even at level 86, my special is not good enough to one hit the Pidgeot, and thankfully it goes for a Sky Attack, it takes an extra turn to charge it up, and that allows me to take it out before he actually gets the move off. Alakazam comes in, and I use the big brain strat here, I mimic recover for reasons that we'll go into in just a minute, I do tank a move, and it gets one hit with Earthquake. Rhydon comes in, goes down to an Ice Beam. Arcanine comes in, it also goes down to a single Earthquake, and now it's time for the Big Egg. And this fight has been beyond annoying, but the silver lining here is that it relies on normal physical moves to chip you down. It wants to put you to sleep and kill you slowly, but with Recover, I can always get my health back up, thus pretty much making it impossible to be knocked out by this Egg Man. The strategy works, I get to Blastoise, I'm nearly at full health, I have higher speed so I do get it off an Earthquake for really heavy damage, and I brace for the absolute worst case scenario, and Blastoise just goes for a withdrawal, and the extra defense means nothing to Seismic Toss, it's below 87 HP, and that's what I got, it finishes off the match, and we get the win, and it's over, I've done it. Here's some final thoughts I have for Cubone, uh, is that it was pretty fantastic for the gym badge part of the run, and it definitely secures its D tier ranking uh, due to how hard it was for it to get to the Elite Four. Uh, Laura Lee was exceptionally challenging, and we had to get close to level 80 before we could even make the fight consistent. Overall, it took a, si a 61 tries here, and we were well under Clefairy and Slowpoke's time going into the Elite Four. The actual final run, we finished it at 9.30, so we spent a really long time here. Uh, the lack of a badge boosting conduit really hurt it because there were several battles that were really close and if I would've just had just a little edge, I think I could've done it. And this run really made me appreciate Seismic Toss. It really saved the run. Mimic is also amazing, but we all know that. So overall, this is gonna go far below Clefairy and Slowpoke. They were fairly nice Pokemon, but Cubone is, Cubone really struggles on the Elite Four. It's not that consistent at all. But anyway, guys, as usual, any feedback here is appreciated. And if you make it this far into the video, you're a real one. And this has been another Pokemon Red and Blue Solo Run and has definitely been a learning experience for me. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.